to show you how to paint this beautiful arbutus tree in acrylics. I had so much fun creating this and I know you will too. When I go outside where I live, I always look for arbutus trees. And when I find them, I take a lot of photographs. I use these photographs to decide what to paint next. So one of the very first steps to starting a really nice landscape painting is to take a really good photograph. This is the finished painting that I'm going to show you step by step what order I painted it in. Um, you'll also see how I painted the rocks and the arbutus bark and the glistening water and the background. It looks quite challenging, but I hope you'll see in the processes that I use that it almost happens magically before your eyes. The first step is just a block in the color. So I did the sky uh, a much lighter blue than the ocean. The ocean is a medium blue. Um, and I actually did the, all of the foreground in, in almost a black. I do mix my own black out of all my darkest colors. And then I blocked in just the main branches of the arbutus tree. What you see here is that I have put some detail in the background, the midground, and the foreground. Um, I did start from top to bottom. I started with those mountains in the back. I blocked them in in a bit of a dark blue, actually. And then on the edges, I, I started putting in some green. Um, but I left the blue in the very middle because those ones are the farthest away. And then I put the sparkling water, the white of the water, in almost right away. And then I put the indication of those waves near the seashore. I don't usually put the foreground detail in the way that I did on this one, on the bark. But there was nothing sort of impeding me from doing that. It wasn't going to make me redo the ocean water or anything like that. So I was getting a bit impatient, so I did block in some of the major colors I could see in the bark in the photograph, um, how there were some really dark spots and there were some really yellow spots and there were some really red spots. And you'll notice if you watch my time-lapse paintings that I'll pick a color that I see in the painting and then I'll go all over the painting and put, you know, blobs and dashes of that same color everywhere on the painting before I go back to a, a different color. This is a good example of that. I started painting in the rocks in this scene, in this phase of the painting, and I could see a lot of blue, even though rocks do not look blue when we're walking around in life. The way that the sun was shining that day and reflections from everywhere, um, there was a distinct shadowy blue, and so I just glanced back and forth at the, the photograph and the painting and, and did the approximate shapes I was seeing in that approximate um, shade of blue in the shadow and um, you'll see in the next phase what happens. So then I changed to kind of a beigey yellowy color. It was a highlight color on the rocks um, and a lot of the rocks had this color on their tops where the sun was catching them. And so just with these two colors, with blue and with this yellowy beigey color, um, all of a sudden those rocks start taking shape. So you may have noticed that when I was doing the foreground, I started with the darkest color first, that black, and then I went to the next darkest color, the, the shadow, the shadow um, blue color. And then I went to a beige color. And last I do the highlights, the kind of more whitey beige on only some of the rocks. And I find this is a really neat way to make um, those highlights pop and just to let your painting work for you. Um, I don't have to paint in all of those black shadows because they're just what's left over of what I haven't painted. So that's kind of fun. Something else I added is the little grasses that you see closest to the foreground. So those are just little wisps of greens and yellows. And I tried really hard to um, not have too many of the same colors in the same bunches of grasses, making sure that some of the sprigs are quite a white color and some are quite yellow. And then also in um, just under the arbutus tree, you'll see little flecks, little dots and flecks and things. That just um, helps to show that there's a reflection of light on the dirt and things below. And 
that really makes it seem closer to because you can see more detail there. In this stage, I started adding some leaves. I use a flat head brush and I just kind of dab the one corner into the canvas and let the other corner make a bit of a, a point on the leaf and I just dab it around with these leaf shapes. They're just like one touch on each leaf. And uh, I do have a couple of different colors on my palette. Um, one very yellowy green, one kind of medium green, and just start kind of filling it in based on what I see in the photograph. And you'll notice that I also kind of blended some of the detail on the bark, on the arbutus bark, uh, more than you've seen in the previous images. And again, I'm just looking back and forth at that photograph, looking at the painting, and, and I'm just thinking of colors and shapes that I'm seeing on those, um, on, the, on the bark. And I'm just kind of painting abstractly and uh, not trying to paint a tree. I'm actually just trying to paint colors and shapes um, on the bark. I, I'm trying to just kind of enjoy the process. And then after a few minutes, I, I you know really look at the overall picture and realize that the, the tree is taking shape. It's starting to look like there's some shadow and some light. And uh, yeah, that's the enjoyment part right there. Now this is pretty much my finished product and all I did really different from the other image was just add some more leaves, take a really good look at the photograph and, and see where the highlighted leaves are, where the more yellowy bunches are, where the greener bunches are, where they're thicker, where they're thinner, where the ocean um, shows through more. And that's what I came up with. I hope you found this video helpful. Please click the subscribe button. I do plan on doing more online painting videos where I can also show you brush types and styles and sizes as well as the colors that I use and how to blend. I plan on uploading every week on Fridays. I have many time-lapse painting videos already on my channel if you'd like to see those. Thank you very much for watching.